Today on Larry King Now, CSI Cyber's Shad Moss on going from Bow Wow to Shad Moss. The, the main thing for me taking on that my, my government name was just branding, you know, just just branding. Bow Wow is someone who was totally different from Shad Moss. Like right now, this is Shad Moss. You might see a little bit of Bow Wow as we continue to talk, but right now this is Shad. And, you know, when I do my acting thing, I never wanted people to say, well, he got this role because... He's a popular rap star. I wanted people in Hollywood to respect the fact that, no, this young man got this role because he really can do it. On a potential new album. It's tough to say. Um, I know my fans were like that, but the, where we're at today in music is totally different than where we were a couple of years ago. You know, we're in a, a what's hot, we're in demand for it right now type of situation. And, you know, that's why there's only like five artists that really can sell records. Everything is right now and it's fast. And it's all about having the hot record at the moment. So for myself, it's all about going back to the drawing board and and, and, and wanting to put out great quality music. And then when it comes, it comes. Plus, I didn't know that flowers cost a lot of money, Larry. I didn't know flowers were <laughs> 40 grand to start off with. This is why <laughs> supposed to pay for the wedding. I like that. You didn't know that? I did not know that. I did not know that. Hey. I'm with babe, you're paying. <laughs> All next on Larry King Now. Welcome to Larry King Now. Our special guest is Sean Moss, or you might know him as Bow Wow. He sold more than 10 million albums to date, has had six number one singles, is the youngest solo rapper to ever hit number one. He's appeared in such films as Roll Bounce and John Sippen Family Vacation and The Fast and the Furious, Tokyo Drift. He was a co-host of BET's flagship show, 106th and Park, which ended its 14th year run in December. And now you can see him as Brody Nelson, opposite Oscar winner Patricia Arquette on CBS's CSI Cyber. We had Patricia on to talk about that, by the way. <laughs> it airs Wednesday nights at 10 p.m. Why are you now shot Moss Bow Wow? Or why, yeah, why are you Bow Wow shot? <laughs> well, first why of, have you taken your name? Well, first, it's a pleasure to be here with you, Thank of course. You. And um, the, the main thing for me, taking on that my, my government name was just branding. You know, just just branding. Bow Wow is someone who was totally different from Shad Moss. Like right now, this is Shad Moss. You might see a little bit of Bow Wow as we continue to talk, but right now, this is Shad. And you know, when I do my acting thing, I never wanted people to say, "Well, he got this role because he's a popular rap star." I wanted people in Hollywood to respect the fact that no, this young man got this role because he really can do it. And also, if you're appearing in a serious thing, what we got to say, see Bow Wow. <laughs> exactly. Of a scandal. Yeah, it's just weird. Like, <laughs> oh, So when did you change? Well, I went through one name change early on in my career. It was Little Bow Wow. And I said my fans never really Little knew. Bow. It was Little Bow Wow. Because, of course, Snoop was the big Bow Wow. And um, with that, it was kind of like I said, yo, my fans, they call me Bow Wow. Why do I have to be Little? And so I just cut the little and then from that it was just bow wow and then close friends and family members just called me bow and then as i got more into you know the entrepreneur side of the business and tackling on this job with csi i said you know what i think it's time for me to come my real name and be more formal snoop found you right correct how did he find you i was in my hometown of columbus ohio and uh snoop and dr dre's tour came through my hometown yeah, it was a sold out show and it was during the intermission the DJ was like, does somebody want to come on the stage and rap a little bit? I was five years old. My mother took me to a Snoop Dogg and Dr. Dre concert at five. I got on stage. I started rapping. Everyone started throwing money. And then uh, on the stage, I thought they were booing. But they were. that was them showing their appreciation. And uh, Snoop and them guys were like, who's on stage? Like, we're not on stage. So why is the crowd going crazy? Like, it was some five-year-old kid out here who's rapping, and they're going crazy. And I immediately went backstage, met Dre and Snoop, and he said, let's make this a part of the show. We'll pick him out the audience in every city. So what was it like working with him? Working with Snoop is a blast. Still to this day, working with him. He's the best. He's a good guy. Great guy. Great guy. Speaks to him all the time. And how did you start working with Jermaine Dupree, who's here today? He's a producer, right? Yes, yeah, sir. How did he work up with you? Through Snoop, actually. Snoop was 
going through a contractual thing at the time with with the record label, and he felt that Jermaine Dupri would be the perfect fit for myself, being that his success with Crisscross and Usher and just so many other young artists, and he was right. He knew, and he placed me right in Jermaine's hands, and him and Jermaine, they have a great relationship as well, and he told Snoop, I got him. What makes a great producer? To me, what makes a great producer is you have to have guidance. You have to be able to guide. You have to be a leader. A great producer has leadership. Um, he has an ear for the music, ear for sound, and just has, um, you know, an IQ level that's, you know, off the charts. To me, you always have to producer. trust him, too. Right? You have to. Have to. And transitioning to TV and film, was that the plan when you were young? Did you always want to go into the acting scene? I never saw this coming, me going into the acting world. I, I, I knew... You know, if I was successful in one thing, doors could possibly open up in the other. But I never saw this happen. I never saw this happen. I thought I would rap, you know, uh, the cute kid grows a little older. He's not cute anymore. Uh, I was in my hometown in Ohio, and I had the director of Like Mike actually flew into town. And they saw me playing basketball in a lot of my videos. And he said, you know, this kid has sold three million copies. He's only 13. Let's give him his first movie. And there it was. The rest is history. It's history. You've had nothing but good. You ever had any downs yet? Uh, You've had, it seems like all ups. Well, with the ups, of course, you you have some downs. I, I've I've had I've had some downs. Just you know, maybe if it was like self doubt. Uh, I still go through that t today. Many young celebrities get into trouble. Chris Brown, Justin mm -hmm. Bieber. You've avoided that. Yeah. How? And those are. Well, Chris is a great friend of mine too, by the way. Um. Just loving what I do, just knowing what I love and, and, and not wanting to jeopardize anything that I love. And I just watch other guys make mistakes. And it's like I never want anybody to report the bad news on me. So that that's what keeps my head forward and, you know, just knowing what's important. You have a new record called Can't Wait, right? Yeah. Coming out with Snoop. Yeah. Will it be Shard Moss or Bow Wow? That's going to be Bow Wow. <laughs> ah, Bow Wow comes back. <laughs> that's going to be Bow Wow for sure, for sure, for sure. When is it coming? It's coming very soon, actually. Um, when Snoop, Jermaine Dupri produced the record, and I, Snoop actually just left to go to Paris, so if he didn't leave, we would have cut the record. His part's already. My part's done, so pretty soon. So pretty soon. Snoop is in Paris? He's in Paris. They're going to have to fumigate it now. Exactly, right? <laughs> Paris is now high. I know. <laughs> will we see another full album? Uh, it's so tough. It, it's tough to say. Um, I know my fans were like that, but... The, where we're at today in music is totally different than where we were at a couple years ago. You know, we're in a, a what's hot, we're in demand for it right now type of situation. And, you know, that's why there's only like five artists that really can sell records. Everything is right now and it's fast. And it's all about having the hot record at the moment. So for myself, it's all about going back to the drawing board and, 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 and wanting to put out great quality of music. And then when it comes, it comes. Being part of one of the biggest franchises on TV. That's next when we get back. infiltrated the HQ. Yeah, that's not easy to do. Yeah, but it's also not impossible. There's a few ways you can do it. My first approach, tailgate in with the returning lunch crowd. Take the flash drive with the mauler on it, place it somewhere in the lobby. If someone's going to pick it up, plug it in, and see who's it is. Option two. Walk in with the evil twin rock. Get it right to the receptions at the front desk. Uh, hey, wait a minute. There's no Josh Hayes here. Oh, it must be new. Just uh, check the system again. Now, you have a twin line going to pose like a trusted network, tricking all the employees' devices into connecting to it. And then, he's dropping in the traffic. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'll buy that. That was a clip from CSI Cyber. That's the first time you're a regular on a TV series. Right? right. How did that come about? I was hosting 106 in Park and got a call from my mother. My mother said, uh, you know, CSI, they're cranking back up. Do you want to be on the show? And I'm like, what, as a, as a spot guest? Because I did it for Entourage. She said, nah, full time. And I said, okay, well, send me the sides. And uh, I remember being in my dress room at BET, and I remember just, you know, I had three minutes to do the audition. We were live, and we were coming out of commercial break. And I was in my dress room, and I did it, sent it. And then Anthony Zucker, the, the creator of CSI, called me that night and said, hey, you want to come to L.A.? The rest was history. How does uh, the C this is all about cyberspace, right? right? This is not CSI Jacksonville or CSI no. Las Vegas, right? <laughs> no. Who do you play? I play a character named Brody Nelson, and Brody Nelson is a, a smart, young, 
with a young man, a lot of swagger, bring a lot of swagger to the office. And, um, you know, he was a black hat hacker, which is a bad hacker. And now he's using his bad skills for good now because... Well, you were a hacker. I was a bad hacker. And now yes. you hack for the good. Yes. What do you do? Find hackers. There you go. Find, help Patricia catch guys like myself. So Patricia's character gave me two, two things, two options. She said, hey, either you can get down with us. I know it might not be the best thing for you, but I think it is because if not, we'll just put you in prison. For a long time. <laughs> and I said, I'll take the job. I get a check, too. So Patricia okay. Arquette's a great, great person. Happy to win the Academy Award for her, huh? Definitely. Do you think your fans are the same, the CSI fans and the Bow Wow fans? No, not at all. I think this was so... different? Very much so different. My fans are, are young. Uh, it varies. It varies because of the films that I've done. So I have some older folks that say, oh, we love Robots because it was a it was a 70s piece. And, of course, my fans love it because I'm in the picture. So this is going to be interesting. We'll have a lot of young youngsters watching CSI like never before, and we'll also have the core CSI fan base that'll be watching it. So to merge both worlds could be big. You like it? You like acting? I love it. I love it. Have you become a little, knowing what CSI Cyber is about, you become a little paranoid about technology? Oh, yeah. Big time. I keep my phone face down. I never let the camera look at me, even if I'm not on it. Um, Wi-Fi, not leaving my computer on. I will always love to leave my computer on so I can walk in the house, just hit the mouse, and it'll be home. But what do you know can happen? Is privacy dead? Yeah, a lot. A lot. And that's the thing. These these criminals are so smart nowadays. And anything with Wi-Fi, they can tap into it. If it. Even if it's a coffee maker, they know how to make that do things. So it's just, when you when you see these things happening and you hear about them, it definitely will shake your world up a little bit. So I'm, I'm definitely approaching a lot of things with caution. Is there a way to avoid it? There is a way. The best way is just really to, I know one way with your passwords, to set double passwords. That's one thing that Patricia will always say. Uh, even with the phone, make sure that you're not always synced on. Like right now, if our phones is on and we're connected to Wi-Fi, someone can tap into our phone right now. So it's best to just stay off Bluetooth, stay off Wi-Fi un until it's time for you to use those things. So it, it can get... Get real tricky. Sounds very cerebral. Are there action scenes in this show? A lot of action. A lot of action. There's a lot of um, fighting, kicking down doors, busting through walls. There's still that that CSI core mixed with cyberness. So you get a lot of everything. But it's definitely action packed. Does Brody still have a little rogue in him? <laughs> you'll see him itch to get back. Yes, he. he you. You'll see him. More fun being a criminal. Oh yeah. Yeah 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> For sure. Most recently, you worked on BET's 106th and Park. That's correct. about Harlem, right? Correct, correct. That was on 14 years? 14 years that show was on, yes. How long were you on? I did it for three. Did it for three. Now, you interviewed people on that show, right? Yeah, sure did. Was that a different thing for you, to be on that side? It was not different for me. Because, you know, I, I look at everything, all of, all of it is a form of entertainment. And to me, in heart, I feel like I'm a pure entertainer. So I always tell my mind that I can do anything as long as I put my mind to it. So it was pretty simple. Why did it go off after 14 years? Yeah, well, just the reason why 106 went off is just the era that we're in now. You know, um, when, when, when music is concerned with TV, like I said, these kids, they're like, why do I have to watch television when I can go online and see my favorite artist's video like this? So it, it became a demand thing, and kids being able to have access to things that they want in a second. And kids control it now, right? There you go. They control it. They control it. Yeah, you were rapping since you were five, right? Correct. What makes a good rapper? What makes a good rapper is lyrics. Lyrics. Are you making sense? What are you telling us? Um, uh, your cadence, your pockets, your time, your swag. Uh, everything makes a good rapper, even from your clothes. To, it, it boils, there's some guys, Larry, who can't rap at all, but can dress well and because they they're appealing. They can just capture a fan base just because of that. Is it singing? Nowadays, there is singing involved in rap. We're starting to, we're entering an era where music is crossing into it. You can hum a rap song? Yeah, you can. <laughs> yeah, you can actually. <laughs> do you still like to go and sing? I do still like to go and perform. I really do get a kick out of performing in front of a live audience, uh, having the control and, and telling 20,000 people to put your hands up and they do it. Uh, I love it. I wouldn't trade it for the world. We talk about building an empire and family life with... Shad Moss, formerly known as Bow Wow, right after this.
Ishad Moss. He's one of the stars of CBS's CSI Cyber. That airs Wednesday nights at 10 Eastern. His new record will be coming out shortly. And uh, everything's going great for him. And we're going to talk a lot about the personal side. What is NDI Vodka? Yes, ND Vodka. ND Vodka. Yeah, and basically it's short for independent. You know, I just want to come with something different. And, you know, that's what it is when you're drinking. Everybody preaches drink responsibly, which means you should know your limit, which means you are you. Be independent. Know your own risk. And actually, it was an idea that, you know, Came, came to mind, and my mother met with a, a great group of people, Walt and those guys, shout out to Walt and, and the crew, and they came up with this concept, man, and, and I just fell in love with it. And I think guys like Puff, like Diddy, and, and guys like that who are older than me who started it, and for younger guys like me to come through. Where's it made? It's made, actually, overseas in Europe, but as of right now, we are legally selling in Georgia. So it's brand new. We have the whole state of Georgia. It's available in Georgia. And uh, Illinois will be next. And then from Illinois... Oh, you're just starting to branch yeah, out. just starting to branch Why out. Why Georgia first? Well, I think uh, the reason for Georgia, number one, I grew up predominantly my whole life in Atlanta. And second, uh, it, it was it was just the, the, the team's target. Georgia was just a more easier state and to start there first, retail-wise. It just made sense. And then Illinois next. So you you want to be a mogul, too? Yeah. yeah. So you like business end as well? Most definitely. Love the business. Do you think liquor is a good image for you? Oh, well, for, for myself, um, you know, I always tell people it, it's not what you do. It, it's how you do it. And for myself, I, I'm always in the night spots and you know whether that's me hosting a party because 106 was really a music party on television so yeah. when i have to go into a night a night bar or a club and host and party i find myself drinking other people's stuff and i drink responsibly and i said if if, if this is my culture i want to make something for my culture for my people for my fans and um and this just fit along with what i have going on so you get this in georgia now yes you can get this in georgia now correct you also have a daughter. Correct. Well, my daughter is four. She'll be four uh, April 27th. Is she with you or her yeah. mother? Yeah, well, with her mom. Me and her mother have a great relationship. You have a great uh, relationship? Yes, yes, with my, with my daughter's mother. Uh, which never is married? Great. Never married. No, never married. Uh, but we have a great, great respect level for one another. Um, no hatred towards her mother. In the same way towards me. We get along just fine, and, and, it, and it works. Our daughter is just so happy with life, and, you know... Um, it just works out for me. You live near each other? Like seven lights down. Yeah. <laughs> it's funny you asked me that. Seven lights down. Oh, that's good. So you're a, you're an, you're their father, right? Oh, yeah. Picking up from school. Just gave her a bath last night. Yeah, most definitely. Now, you're engaged to someone else in the spotlight, reality star Erica Mena, right? Yes, sir. How did you guys meet? We met years there ago. There she is. Oh. I'm told that when you Google you, that comes up, right? It, yes, it does. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I met my fiance uh, actually years ago here in LA. I was actually shooting a video, and she was there. And then it went from that point to actually me doing a movie, Lottery Ticket, which you named. She was actually supposed to be the main girl in the movie. And so from there, we just always remained close friends. And then 106 and Park came and I actually come host a Valentine's Day special with me. And it just so happened we kissed on air and sparked. That's flipped. the way it started. That's the way it started. <laughs> So you were friends first. Friends first. Friends first. And feel say, so when are you gonna get married? Summertime. Looking for summertime. Already been on phone calls of wedding planners. I didn't know that flowers cost a lot of money, Larry. I didn't know flowers <laughs> were forty grand to start off with. This is the bride <laughs> is supposed to pay for the wedding. I like that. You didn't know that? I did not know that. I did not know that. Hey. I'm with babe, you're paying. <laughs> Take it. The bride pays. The bride pays. <laughs> don't trust me, shot. Don't let it get away with it. I'm not. I'm not. <laughs> Why do you think people are so interested in your personal life? I think you know it, it's not just my personal life. I think that you know that's just the thing now. Everybody wants to know what's beyond the entertainment, what's beyond the celebrity shield. That's what they really want to know. And we just live in a gossip era, Instagram, Twitter, and it's just intriguing to some people to know what's going on in somebody's life. But for me, you know, I understand that comes with the territory. I just try my, my best just to, you know, live fair and just continue to do what I do. Are you in the tabloids a lot? No. And if I am, it's for, you know, good stuff. I never really behavior-wise find myself uh, around anything that can bring harm my way or trouble my way. And I understand, like I said, I understand who I work for and I love what I do. You always got along with the media then, huh? Mm-hmm. 
never really had any issues with no even if a reporter might say something about me i never respond to it because i know i might do something next that that reporter might love and so i, I, I never really get into it with the media because i need them just like they need me now that you're a mogul and you're getting serious you have major acting roles you're getting married you like being called bow wow I know Jermaine is looking like <laughs> uh, Jermaine like it. Jermaine likes it because that's on the record. <laughs> Jermaine don't care about the acting. Jermaine cares about the record. <laughs> Jermaine is like, uh, you're bow wow for life. I don't care what you say. But, uh, you know, he, he knows, you know, I, the shot thing for me, it's important, you know, but I'm going to be bow wow forever. Forever. Special media questions and a little game of if you only knew. And we get back. We're back with Shad Moss, also known as Bow Wow, or Bow Wow, also known as Shad Moss. We have some social media questions for him. Okay. Born to be free tweets. Since you've done comedy for the most part, was it hard transitioning for CSI Cyber? No, it was not a hard transition. Uh, being because, in, even in my comedic roles, I would still find a little drama, a little, you know, dramatic stuff to do. Uh, so for me... You know, it, it was it was pretty cool, man. Just being on set with Patricia and James and those guys and my castmates and just following the, the energy that they were giving off. And, you know, it was pretty much cool. It was cool. Uh, Robbie, uh, Rod Homie Rod says, when will you be coming out with new music? New music soon. Very soon. Very soon. Within the next, I would say, by the end of this month. They should have some. End of March. Yeah, end of March. They should have some. And A Stories J10, how do you prepare before filming scenes? How do I, what do I, that's a good question. What do I do? Um, wow. Prepare, prepare. Here's one. I rehearse my lines in my sleep. That's a, that's a trick of mine that I do. In your sleep? In my sleep. You can be conscious in your sleep? Yes, sir. Uh, wait a minute. <laughs> I knew he was going to ask me to go to sleep and be caught, con- not a dream. Not You're a dream. Conscious in your yep. sleep. Yep. Yep. That's how I learn my lines. I would be sleep and... I'll have my, my, I'll look at my sides of my iPhone, I'll go to sleep, and they'll just be there, and I'll, I'll repeat them, I'll sleep, like I have sleep, and then when I wake up, they're just there, because I've been repeating them and repeating them. So you don't have trouble with it? No. From Joy on our Larry King Now blog, what was the biggest challenge filming CSI site? The biggest challenge was the dialogue, hands down. If any of my castmates were sitting here at this table, they would tell you the hardest thing was the dialogue, the tech talk. The, the, oh the yeah, you gotta learn was, that uh, stuff monologues i mean patricia's an oscar award winner she would tell you right now she was going through it like we're just all going is the tech talk for real or invented talk tech talk is for real because we have to explain what we're doing to the viewers so that's when it gets hard so it's like well this microphone here has a cord that runs east and west but if you switch the blue cord to the red cord what happens is and you just get no (laughs) exactly i lost you already And from Jamie on our Larry King Now blog, what do you expect your career to be like 10 years from today? I want to be, I just, I just want to be bigger than what I am now. I see myself still being on CSI Cyber if we continue to do 10 years like all the other ones have done. So definitely being on CSI, uh, hopefully at that time, Indy Vodka's full out taken off. And my hands are probably into three other new things. I just want to be bigger than all of my peers who did it before me, who laid down the fire. I want to be bigger than Diddy. You know, I want to be bigger than Jermaine. I want to be bigger than driven. Hard. Yeah. I want it bad. Going to have a clothing line? I don't want to scare you or shock you, but I have that now. AYC, Asphalt Yacht Club. And actually, I returned the favor. We signed Snoop to our clothing line. How about that? So Snoop put me in the game, and I brought him over to my clothing line. So I have a feeling you're going to make it big. I want to. When do you want to be president? <laughs> <laughs> and now for a game of if you only knew, I just throw questions at you, and you fall up. You Who's the first girl you kissed ever? <sighs> Probably my mother. No, no, no. <laughs> that was the same answer, right? Yeah. First, uh, you don't remember? I don't remember, Larry. Was it in New York? In Ohio, for sure. Oh, yeah, Columbus. Yep. But you don't remember the girl? Definitely don't remember. I bet you she remembers. She definitely does. The superpower <laughs> you'd like to have? Invincible. 
I, I, I would like to be invisible. Yeah. yeah, me too. I yeah. love to be invisible. Yeah. Oh, my God. I would love to just walk around and hear what people are saying. Yeah, about you know well, <laughs> maybe not so good. Yeah, I know, right? Would you rather hit a home run or catch a touchdown pass? <sighs> hit a home run. Someone you'd like to record with? Mm, that's tough. Someone I would like to record with. Wow, wow. Have you done duets? Taylor Swift. Not bad. Someone you like to act with? Don Cheadle. Great guy. Love him. Craziest fan encounter? Chicago, Illinois. My first tour, I had a girl. My tour bus was parked in the loading dock. I had a girl jump from the loading dock later on the top of my tour bus. I said, I'm not getting down until I get a picture with you. And we had to call the fire department to get her down. And we got her down. Had to take the picture. That's all she wanted? That's all she wanted. That's all she was going to get there. <laughs> <laughs> Biggest splurge. Biggest splurge. My house in Atlanta. Job you'd like to try for a day. Run a record company. Time period you'd like to go back and visit. Ooh. Just one time period, not two? You can pick two. I got to go with the 70s and the 80s. You were a baby. Uh, yeah, I'm an 80s baby. Uh, yeah, no. <laughs> Artist you admired as a child. Snoop. Favorite TV show to watch with your daughter. <laughs> Peppa Pig. <laughs> Pepper Pig? Peppa Pig, yeah. That's a pig who was Pepper. It's a, it's a pig, a family of pigs. They're from England, and my daughter goes crazy <laughs> for Peppa Pig. Snoop Dogg or Snoop Lion? Snoop Dogg. Music you're listening to right now? Pandora. Guilty pleasure. <laughs> guilty pleasure. Oh, what's my guilty pleasure? What's my guilty pleasure? I'm trying to think of a good one. Uh, wow, what's my guilty pleasure? What do you like? Is there something you like to eat? This, or uh, Is there anything? My guilty pleasure is wrestling. I like wrestling. I think of, you watch wrestling. I like, yeah, I still, yeah. I just bought the new wrestling video game the other day. I still. Have you gone to those Monday night WWE? I've been to so many of them. Jermaine took me to my first one. I'll never forget that. My first match. I've been to one. I love it. Do you Crazy. like it? It is. Do you believe it? Come on. I do only because some guys have died from it and some guys have taken injuries, but it is a form of entertainment. But if done the wrong way with those stunts, it can be definitely tragic. TV show you can't miss. CSI Cyber. Pet peeve. What bugs you? Oh, traffic. Best city to perform in? Chicago, for me. And one thing more, hidden talent. I can talk like people. I can impersonate people pretty well. You do? Yeah, really well. Work on me. <laughs> You know, uh, wait, I need some time. I need some time. <laughs> I don't want to embarrass myself. You got it, Larry. Thanks. Thank my guest, Sean Moss. <laughs> Be sure to catch CSI Cyber Wednesday nights at 10 on CBS. And remember, you can find me on Twitter at King's Things. And I'll see you next time. Bow, bow. That's right.